you've done a lot of fasting. I mean, you have a lot of experience doing right. fasts of many different lengths, including, I don't know what the longest fast is that you've done. What Probably 10 days. 10 days, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, one thing that I absolutely learned through fasting uh, is the, the, uh, the enormous importance of strength training throughout a fast. It's very easy. You're, you're going to lose muscle mass when you fast. You have to accept that. So the question is, how do you minimize that damage? How do you lose as little muscle mass as possible? And um, strength training daily during a fast has become an important part of that. But when you look at time restricted feeding, which is, or people call it intermittent fasting, although I don't, I don't like that term very much. I think time restricted makes more sense when you're just talking about, you know, 16 or 18 hours. Um, I. I, I'm, I'm really starting to see a lot of people who do that excessively and who aren't necessarily training correctly. They lose weight, but they're losing muscle more than they would want to see. And, you know, we just had a patient who we did a DEXA scan on last week. Um, and it was probably the first one we've done in 18 months on him. And in that 18 month period, his body weight had not changed. Maybe he was a bit lighter, actually. He might've lost four pounds, but his body fat was so high, I almost fell off my chair. And he doesn't look chubby, right? But he's, he, it's, it speaks to how much muscle he's lost. So he, his body fat went from about 18% to 30%. Yikes. Which was, you know, it's just a totally unacceptable amount of fat for someone his age. Um, and, and his visceral fat went up, which I actually care more about than body fat. We can talk about that later. Um, but his visceral fat also went up. So, you know, this is a guy who has religiously been doing his time restricted feeding every day, but he doesn't really lift weights. You know, he, he walks and, you know, does some yoga and stuff like that, but he's not doing strength training. So I think in a person like that, there, there's a real downside to too much time restricted feeding. And even for myself, like in the last four or five months, I've been, I, I, you know, I did a DEXA back in January and I hadn't done one in years. And from the, from January to the last period that I had done a DEXA, my body weight was almost identical. Maybe I was two pounds lighter this year versus the last time, but my body fat was up I think I went from 10 to 16% body fat. Um, and again, you could say, well, 16 is not the end of the world, but you know, that was a significant loss of muscle and gain of fat. Um, and I, I did wonder if that was just too much because, because I always exercise in the morning, but then don't eat. So you, you know, to exercise and then not provide yourself with, especially with when you're strength training to provide yourself with any amino acids every single day to, you know, undergo muscle protein synthesis, I think is a little bit risky. So, I, so I've been looking at other strategies around that, right? So I probably spent maybe two years doing seven days a quarter, maybe a year doing of three days a month. Um, and then, but in between, it's also doing lots of time restricted. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, I think the daily time restricted was a bit more the issue because yeah. I think you can, you relatively, you can, you know, I, I think the three day fast a month with a lot of lifting, I didn't sense I lost a lot of muscle mm. during that period of time. But I think every day, exercising in the morning, not putting calories in until later in the day, um, it, it has to be it, it has to be taken in the context of an individual. So if you're someone who's 100 pounds overweight or you have diabetes, it's a totally worthwhile trade-off to lose muscle mass because you're losing more fat mass along the way, yeah. right? So you are going to technically get leaner with that approach. But when you take a relatively healthy and lean individual, um, you, one has to be a little bit careful and look for alternative ways to sort of get the benefits of that fast. Next In an ideal time. world, I think that the best way to do time-restricted eating would be to eat a big breakfast. So it would be to wake up, exercise, eat a huge breakfast, by huge, I don't mean gluttonous, but I mean, that's your biggest meal of the day at say, I don't know, like, let's just put some numbers to it. You wake up at six, you work out from seven to eight 30 at nine o'clock. You're eating your largest meal. You eat another meal at one o'clock that is modest and you don't eat again. That would be a great way to do 16 hours of not eating a day. Um, that's problematic for two reasons. The first is it's socially problematic. It's really easy to not have breakfast because very few people eat breakfast with other people, but dinner is our social meal. And 
for obvious reasons, it just poses a difficulty to be the guy who never eats dinner. And then the other thing is, I think for many people, it is hard to go to bed hungry. Mm. Um, and truthfully, in longer fasts, it gets easier because, you know, if you're fasting for seven days, by the time you hit that fifth day, you're, a lot of your hunger has sort of dissipated. But 16 hours of not eating can generally pose some hunger. And, and for some reason, I just think psychologically in the evening, we're a little less busy. So it's even more noticeable. Um, whereas if you're doing the traditional way that people think about not eating for 16 hours, it's pretty easy to wrap yourself up and work in the morning, skip breakfast and kind of delay your lunch a little bit. Mm. So, you know, I don't know that I have a great answer for that other than I think people should be a little cautious and not just apply the same hammer uh, to, to every nail and kind of think about their own physiology a little bit and, and rely on these, you know, technologies like DEXA to make sure, yeah. which again is so, so readily available, so relatively inexpensive, um, and, and provides both good information about body composition and also this thing of visceral fat that, 